two, one. All right. Hey, sports fans, BBC Sports Chaos, we're coming back at you once again. Social distancing. PB, I've got a little thing going from um, Everett, Mass, to Santilli Air. What are you drinking tonight? Um, well, I got this um, Screaming Rails IPA from Delray Beach, Florida, a brewery called. Uh, oh, and apparently I have some tequila shots coming in here, too. Hold oh! on. I got, I got a little uh, Jose Cuervo uh, Añejo. Añejo. So I'm going to do this up right now. Whoa! PB, I got some texts mm. from some of our fans. They want to see who's serving those drinks. All right. Well, come over here. These are my... Um... Oh! oh this yeah! is Johnny. And this is the lovely Miss Velasca. TB12 <laughs> approves. TB12 approves. <laughs> All, right. All right. Let's get right, All right. into this thing. So, hey, wait. What are you, hold on. Hold on. You got to do, you gotta do um, N N N NFC West, right? We're doing the NFC West. Make sure you share with us your predictions. We want to hear from our fans. We want to know where you think these teams are going to finish. All right. Hey, by the way. I got to get a little boost up. I found this thing in my tailgating stuff. My old friend, Darren Fernandes, it was his little, his little tushy cushy sitting on the stands. I'm going to put it under my tushy tonight. Thank you, Darren, a first responder for the Boston Fire Department. I appreciate that. It's only four years sitting in my garage. Anyways, you heard from PB. We're going to talk about the NFC West. Be first, we got a little two-minute drill. This week was a renowned week in Boston Celtics history. First, on Monday night, the Boston Celtics, 34 years ago, they won NBA championship number 16 behind Larry, Kevin, and Robert Parrish. Oh, and by the way, 40 years ago on Wednesday night, that was when that team was founded. Red Auerbach made a little trade with the Golden State Warriors. He sent them the number one pick for the number three pick, and all he got back was a guy named Robert Parrish and Kevin McHale. Red Auerbach, still the genius of the NBA. I love it. Hey, PB, I got something for you. ESPN this past weekend had their top 10 goats of all sports all time. Let me just read the stats. I'm not going to say who they were. Three tennis players, two golf players, one NASCAR, one swimmer, and then regular sports. I don't – how does that compute? I don't get it. Well, first of all, you know how I feel about NASCAR. <laughs> Conversation goes nowhere. Just a round, round and round. Round and round. <laughs> um, right. But, but um, too many individual sports there. I think there should be some more team sports players. So, I disagree. I disagree Speaking with Speaking of individual sports, golf did kick off this past Thursday. Yesterday, they're playing again. 16 of the top 20 played. By the way, they announced a minor league for golf players. If you play Division One golf for four years, you could play in the G League of golf. Good luck with that one. All right. I gotta, let's talk with this. So the three big sports still to play right now, NBA, NHL, MLB. First of all, MLB is not going to ever play again. That's my prediction. These guys don't get it. First of all, the owners want to play 50 games. The players want to play 114 games. Then there was a counter bid for 78 games. Now it's up to 86. I don't get it. We're done with MLB. I, I think we're done. MAB, NBA, NHL. These guys may get it right. I think the NHL has the best of all plans. No regular season games. They're going to go right into the playoffs. The four top seeds in every conference play a little round robin. The other teams, 16 of them, they play a tournament to see who gets eliminated, and they move into the playoffs. Good move. NBA wants to play eight regular season games yeah. after seven weeks of training camp in isolation down in Orlando, a good place to be. I get it, Disney World, blah, blah, blah. But still, for eight games, I don't know about that. Yeah. All right. What do you think? I, I think it'll be a historic. I think I'm glad. 
I'm glad they both won it. I think it's going to be a historic playoff run. I think it'll be a historic champion that will never be forgotten. So I think it's an important year to, to win the championship. Um, and, and what I heard today, too, is that some NBA players are saying they don't want to live in confinement and they may not play. And I think the NBA is trying to grant them um, a, a, a stay at home without pay option with no penalty if you choose not to play in Orlando, which I think is a little, a little crazy. But That is correct. Because think about it. If you're one of the eight teams that don't make the playoffs, you go down there for seven weeks, no family, no friends, nothing. It's like being in prison. What? I don't get it. Whatever. Yeah. All right. Hey, yeah. by the way, the Lakers open up as two to one favorites. God, don't let that happen, please, because they tie our Celtics. We don't want that to happen. All right. Let's get right into no. this thing. We're going to talk about the NFL this week. By the way, this came in from one of our loyal followers, Gary Dimps Russell. He said, are you going to talk about uh, Colin Kaepernick? I guess we have to because, you know what? It's about time he gets back in the league. But – a good observation by him. Colin Kaepernick is no better than Blaine Gabbard. They both have strong arms. They're both athletic. They both can run. Should one guy be in the league and the other guy? I don't know. Who knows? What do you think, PB? Well, I think, I mean, Kaepernick certainly stepped up from Blaine Gabbard. Um, he went to the Super Bowl. He took a team to the Super Bowl, exactly. Um, I mean, he's been removed from the league too long. I don't know if he can jump in and be anybody at this point just from being removed from the league for so long. I mean, there's being in shape and there's being in football shape, right? So, uh, not sure. Not sure he would make an impact, but, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Hey, by the way, DYK, the richest player, according to Forbes, in any of the team sports – it's none other than Ronaldo. I know you're a soccer fan. One billion dollars he's made in his lifetime playing soccer and all the endorsements he gets with it. Is it deserved? Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah. I mean, he obviously plays over in, in, in Europe. I mean, he plays on, um, you know, the world team for, for Portugal. He plays oh, wait, with, uh, you know, in the Premier League. I mean, he – look, look, he, he – if they play their play is big money over there, and then he has all the endorsements of all the, the products and shown in all those different countries in Europe. It, it doesn't surprise me at all. It doesn't surprise all right, me. All right. All right. Let's get to footballs. Speaking of Colin Kaepernick and his adversary, uh, or his, his, not his adversary, his number one fan, Richard Dick Sherman, I call him. Oh, Toast Sherman from the San Francisco 49ers. Do you pick the 49ers to win the NFC West, the most competitive division in football? All right, I agree with you. It's the most competitive division in football. Um, I have three 10-win team, ten teams coming out of this division. Um, but surprisingly, I do not have the 49ers winning the division. Whoa! Uh, Jimmy G is not going to win it. Can you believe that, TB? I don't. I, I have the, the more savvy veteran quarterback in Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks winning that division. Now, here's a bet of the century. Vegas has Seattle right now at nine for under over, which means to lose that bet, they would have to go eight and eight. If they go win nine, you push. And if they win 10 or more, you win the bet. I think right now that's a great bet in Vegas. Yeah. Whoa! All right. I like it. I like it too. Um, twelve and four. I have one in that division going twelve and four, outperforming their Vegas under over win total by three. Uh, they do have a tough little schedule to open up at Atlanta and New England and Dallas back to back at home. I think they open up strong and win all three of those games. Uh, they'll build some confidence at that point, and unfortunately, they'll drop two of the next three, losing at Miami, winning back home against Minnesota, but then losing in an upset at Arizona. Tough divisional game there on the road. Uh, then they go on a nice four-game winning streak, beating good teams here. San Francisco at home, at Buffalo, at the Rams. Then they come back and get some revenge on the Cardinals and beat them at home to win four straight. Then they got to go up to Philly. I got Philly as a loss right now. Then they win four straight after that, winning at home against the Giants and Jets, two pretty popcorn games there with two teams having to travel to the West Coast. Then you go – out to the East Coast and play at Washington, but Washington is Washington, so they'll, they'll win that one. Then they play at home against the Rams. They win that, so they, they're actually sweeping the Rams. 
and then they have to play and finish up on the road at San Francisco. They will lose at San Francisco, but by then they'll have the division locked up. They'll be 12 and three going into that game. They finish 12 and four. Whoa, all right. I do see them going 12 and four, but I get a little news for you when you get to the uh, Rams. Uh, I mean, not the Rams, the 49ers. I, I, think they're, I think that game against Atlanta, they lose that for sure, the first game of the year. They split with LA, I know you don't agree. And I'm not so sure they filled some of their gaps other than maybe Carlos Hyde at running back. So I want to see what you have to say about the 49ers next. Yeah, well, I got the 49 is not – I mean, I still have them outperforming the Vegas under over. Vegas has them coming in at 10.5 right now. I have them at 11-5. and five. So I got them outperforming the Vegas under over still. But 11-5 and five will not be good enough to win that division with the Seattle Seahawks in there at 12-4. However, that will put them in line for the best wild card spot uh, in the NFC. Here's how I have it happening. Uh, opening day home loss. Super Bowl hangover kicking in right off the bat to the what? Arizona what? Cardinals, losing at home to Arizona to start the season. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then they go on a five-game winning streak at the Jets, at the Giants, despite having to travel on the, to the East Coast. They'll probably stay in New York or on the East Coast and won't come back home, I'm guessing, that early in the season going out East. Uh, so they'll be able to recover and play and win both those games. They come back home against Philly, Miami, and the Rams, and they win all those. So they go 5-1 and one to open the season. Then they have a tough two-game road trick. They're going to go back out east again and play New England. They'll lose that game coming off their five-game winning streak. Then they have to go up to Seattle. I got them losing that game as well. Then they come home against Green Bay and win, and then they're going to go back out east, kind of, to New Orleans, and they'll lose that one on the road. They come uh, – no, then they have to go on the road to the Rams. They'll win that. Buffalo and Washington, back-to-back -back weeks at home, win those both. Then they have a tough little game down the stretch here. It's going to be a big game for them to try and get ahead of Seattle in that division, and they'll drop it. They have to go up to Dallas in their third last game of the season. I have that as an, their fifth and final loss before finishing off with a two-game win streak at Arizona, getting some revenge on that opening day loss. And then they play Seattle at home in their final game, and they win that as well. Finish 11-5. and five. Wow. Wow. All right. I actually think they're 13-3. 12-4 and four and worse, but not 11-5. and five. I think they – first of all, they replaced some key parts. DeForest Buckton went to the Colts, as we know, but they drafted the number one defensive tackle, Javon Kinlaw. They lost Emmanuel Sanders, who was getting a little bit aged anyways. They did draft Brandon Ayuk from Arizona State, who is a stud. So I think they'll be all right there. But I got to say, I think this team, unless Jimmy G cannot perform, is easily 13-3, and 12-4 and four at worst. All right, who do you got next? All right. All right. Here's my big surprise. I said there would be three 10-win teams coming out of this division. Some of you may have thought that that third team right now would be the Rams, but au contraire, my friends, sorry. It's going to be the Arizona Cardinals. I, I look at as an up-and-coming team. DeAndre Hopkins is a new target for Kylo Murray in his sophomore season, and I just see this team achieving over expectations. Vegas has them at 7.5 right now for an under-over. I have them outperforming that by 2.5 games, coming in at 10-6. and six. Uh, that should be good enough to get into the playoffs as a wild card. And I have them opening up with a win on the road, full mentioned, San Francisco beating them in San Francisco. Then they come home and they have two popcorn games, Washington and Detroit. They start 3-0. and They get a little high on themselves. And then they go into Carolina, who I have predicted as a two-win team this year, and they lose on the road in Carolina. That will be somewhat of an upset. Then they go out to the East Coast to play the Jets. They win that. Then they have to go up to Dallas, or down to Dallas, I should say. They'll lose that one in Dallas. Then they come home and they beat Seattle in a big win at home. And then they also follow that up with a big win at home against the Miami Dolphins. Then they try to win that third game in a row at home because they have three home games in a row here against Buffalo. But Buffalo will 
come in and beat the Cardinals in that one. So there's a loss. Then they'll carry on a three-game losing streak for the mix. They have two tough road games at Seattle and at New England. So they'll lose both of those as well. That, that's a three-game losing streak. But then they'll go on a three-game winning streak. Rams at home, at the Giants, and then a real big win down the stretch. They're going to need this one to get in the playoffs. They'll beat the Philadelphia Eagles at home. Then they have to play San Francisco at home. I already mentioned they would lose that game because San Francisco is going to come in and get some revenge there. And then they'll finish up on the road sweeping the L.A. Rams because I have the L.A. Rams already out of the playoff picture at that point. Arizona will be 9-6, and six, needing to win that game in order to make the playoffs. And that's why they'll beat the Rams and sweep the Rams and beat them on the road in the final game of the season. 10-6 and six are the Cardinals this year. Whoa! For a team that only did one thing, they added DeAndre Hopkins to the roster. I don't see it. I think they go 4-12, and 12, maybe 5-11 and 11 at best. I think, first of all, they're going to go east twice to play the Giants and the Jets, and God forbid they lose both those games, which they could. Who knows? Even their home games, Miami and Washington, that could be easy wins, may not be. So I, All right. Moving on! Give us the what you think is the fourth place team, the Rams, which I don't see at all. But go ahead. Well, I, I know the the Rams are so pathetic. I think I'm gonna actually just give you the teams I think they'll lose to. I mean, they have a, they don't. I mean, who I think they can actually beat this year. I have Wait a minute, time out, to, time out. They're two years removed from the Super Bowl. You think they're pathetic? I do. I do. They lost. Right. They lost Todd Gurley, who who the offense went through Gurley. Jared Goff is not is not what people think he is. And I, I'm just not – the defense has fallen off. I, I just don't see them as a team that's going to even – they could actually buy for a first-round pick next year with the year they're going to have. A um, number one pick. And, and even Ve Vegas has them at eight, under over. I mean, they have Arizona at seven and a half, and they have the Rams at eight. So they're looking at Arizona and the Rams as almost the same team. I have the Arizona right. outperforming. Lots of good things are happening in Arizona. I think lots of bad things are happening in L.A. And, I mean – I got them winning at home against the Giants, winning at Washington, winning at home against the Bears, and winning at home against the Jets. The, the other ones in the games at Dallas, at Philly, at Buffalo, at San Francisco, at Miami, Seattle at home, at Tampa Bay, San Francisco at home, at Arizona, New England at home, at Seattle. And then I told you about that Arizona game, last game of the year at home. Arizona's going to be right in the thick of things. They're going to be out of it. They'll drop that one too. So – I got them losing 12, only winning four. Wow. 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 Sean McVay was the, 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 like the hero. The, he was the genius of the NFL two years ago, and now his team sucks, and he's an idiot. All right. All right. All right. Uh, you know what? You might be right. I think they go nine and seven. But you, uh, you know what? You made a good argument. I'm, I'm starting to think about that. All right. So, PB, you're here next Tuesday for a live show. Who are we doing next week? Yeah, we're going to do um, – Russ and I will be together. I'll be making a trip up to Boston. And we're going to do the – we have to do the AFC East. We have to cover the Patriots. While All the right. The, Dolphins, the, the, new, the new team that PB is obviously vested in with season tickets. Not, I'm not a fan of them necessarily, but I'm going to go watch them play some football. they got a good home schedule. But we'll be covering that, that uh, AFC East. So looking forward to it. All right, sports fans, PB and C, sports chaos. We came back at you once again. We'll be back again on Tuesday night. Take care. Enjoy your weekend. Thanks, PB.